All right, let's consider the function sine of t squared. Now the integral of this function cannot be found using any analytical method. So therefore, the method of substitution or integration by parts, which are the two main methods of integration, can't be used to solve this integral. That's because this integral does not exist as an elementary function. So in other words, we can't express this integral as a finite sum of known functions. Now there are plenty of other examples. For instance, cos of x squared e to the x squared 1 over the natural log of x cos of e to the x None of these functions can be integrated using traditional methods. But here is an interesting phenomenon. Let's have a look at the uh, graph of sine of t squared. Okay, I've got uh, sine of x squared graph here. And as you can see, it is a continuous function for all of x. And that means an integral does exist for all values of x. So I can express this integral as a function of x if I say capital S of x is equal to the integral from 0 to any value of x and this is known as the Fresnel integral. Now you might think if we can't find an expression for this integral what's the point of expressing it this way? Well we can't find an expression as a sum of finite known functions such as polynomials or natural logarithms or trigonometric functions but we can find an expression for this integral as a sum of an infinite series. Alright now the Fresnel integral was originally used by Fresnel to model diffraction of light but I believe now it has some application in the architecture and, and the design of highways. So it's interesting to see these concepts being used in modern life. And now since this is a function of x, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the derivative of this is simply the sine of x squared. And by the way, the fundamental theorem of calculus basically states that integration and differentiation are opposite functions, as in one undoes what the other does. But now let's try and express this integral as a sum of an infinite series. Now you may recall the Maclaurin series for sine x, so let me write Maclaurin series for sine of x. which is equal to x minus x cubed on 3 factorial plus x to the 5th on 5 factorial minus x to the 7th on 7 factorial plus the next odd power of x and expressed explicitly it is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, so it's an infinite sum, of the constant negative 1 to the power of n times x to the power of 2n plus 1, so every odd power of x, all over 2n plus 1 factorial. Now since we have the Maclaurin series for sine of x, we can also then deduce that the Maclaurin series for sine of t squared is, and all we do here is simply substitute t squared for x, so we have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n by t squared of 2n plus 1 all over 2n plus 1 factorial. And now if I apply my index laws and take this 2n plus 1 into the parentheses, I'll get the sum 
from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n by 4 t to the 4 n plus 2 all over 2 n plus 1 factorial. Now this expression for sine of t squared can then be substituted here and then we can perform this as a simple power integral. So the function s of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n by t to the 4n plus 2 all over 2n plus 1 factorial with respect to t of course. Now most of these elements in the integral can actually come out the front so the sum can come out the front outside of the integral as can the constant negative 1 to the power of n and also 2n plus 1 factorial is also a constant I should refer them to as coefficients not constants and all we're left with is the integral of 0 to x of t to the 4n plus 2 with respect to t and this is then a simple power integral so the result is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the nth power on 2n plus 1 factorial by t to the 4n and we increase the power by 1 so t to the 4n plus 3 and divide by the new power 4n plus 3 and of course this has to be evaluated between the bounds of x and 0 so this lower bound of 0 goes to 0 so the result as a function of x is simply the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n of x to the 4n plus 3 all over 2n plus 1 factorial by 4n plus 3 alright so the first few terms of this series is x to the power of 3 on 3 minus x to the power of 7 on 3 factorial by 7 plus x to the power of 11 on 5 factorial by 11 minus x to the power of 15 on 7 factorial by 15 plus x to the power of 19 on 9 factorial by 19 plus so on and if we take these few terms and maybe a couple of more and plot them as a polynomial we should get a graph that looks something like this so here the cyan curve corresponds to the function sine of x squared which can also be considered s prime and the orange curve is s of x which of course is equal to the integral from x equals 0 to sine of t squared dt and we just want to use some of the qualitative aspects of this graph to confirm that the orange curve is in fact the integral of s prime or vice versa or that s prime is the derivative of s of x so here we can see that s of x is increasing when s prime is in the positive so when s prime is greater than 0 and here we see that when s prime is less than 0 s of x is decreasing and at this local maximum we expect the slope of s of x to be 0 and if we follow a vertical line down from this point we can see that s prime of x is equal to 0 alright so that's just a qualitative confirmation that the integral of sine of x squared does exist I hope you have found this video useful if so please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel for more helpful free math tutorials 
In the meantime, best of luck with your studies and I'll see you next time.